Hi, I'm a sand recap, and this is a movie to get. The Hurt Locker During the Iraq War, a sergeant is newly assigned to a military bomb disposal unit and faces disagreement with his team due to his unorthodox approach to handling bombs. In 2004, a team of three soldiers from an army bomb disposal unit were checking out a report of a homemade explosive device. They utilized a high-tech drone robot to inspect the device, which was made of several unexploded artillery shells connected and concealed by plastic and cloth sheets. The team, headed by Sergeant Thompson, determined that they could destroy the IED by using plastic explosives activated from a secure location. Thompson said that the explosion would cause minimal damage to property and no loss of life. The robot had a small cart attached to it which was then sent back into the blast area. However, before reaching the IED, the trailer lost a wheel. Thompson, wearing a heavy bomb suit, went down to the trailer, picked it up, and carried it to the IED to properly set it up. As he walked back, his partners, Sergeant Sanborn and Specialist Eldridge, monitored the surrounding area for anyone who may be in the blast zone. When Thompson was approximately 25 meters away from the bomb but still in the dangerous area, Eldridge noticed a man operating a butcher shop and using a cell phone. Eldridge yelled to Sanborn and Specialist Eldridge ran towards the man, demanding he drop the phone. Sanborn instructed Eldridge to shoot the man, who then activated the bomb with a series of numbers on the phone. The bomb detonated with Thompson still in the le lethal area, causing a large amount of blood to hit the inside of his helmet visor, despite the bomb suit, as the overpressure from the blast killed him. Sanborn oversees the process of packing Thompson's body into a coffin for shipment back home and briefly inspects Thompson's belongings before the coffin is closed. At the base, Eldridge is sitting in the recreational room when he is approached by the base psychologist, Lt. Col. Cambridge, who inquires about his well-being. Eldridge, still troubled by the incident, repeatedly pulls the trigger of his rifle, suggesting that if he had shot the man with the cell phone, Thompson may still be alive. A new leader for the team, Sergeant William James, arrives at the base and meets Sanborn at his housing unit. When Sanborn recommends that James keep the plywood covers on his windows due to the threat of shrapnel from mortars, James replies that they wouldn't be useful anyway if a mortar shell hit the roof of the unit. The following day, the team responds to a report of another IED in a narrow street in the city. After linking up with the army platoon that reported the bomb, James dons a suit similar to the one Thompson wore previously. As James approaches the bomb site, he throws a smoke grenade, causing frustration for Sanborn who cannot see James to provide further instructions. James also does not communicate with his team members, which frustrates Sanborn further. James finds an artillery shell buried under a pile of trash, which he disarms easily. He then sees a secondary wire leading away from it, which he follows to find a junction of six more cables. When he pulls the junction connector, he uncovers six more shells, and another cable leads to a nearby building. James disarms the six shells and sees a man quickly leaving the building, presumed to be the bomber. James shows the man one of the small detonators from one of the shells and smiles, causing the man to disappear from view. Back at their Humvee, Sanborn tells James that he needs to communicate more during opera operations and not treat his job as if it's a solo act but James brushes off the advice. Later, when James and Sanborn talk while grooming for another day's work, James ignores Sanborn's suggestion again. The team responds to another bomb threat, this time in a car near a UN building. James dons a bomb suit and approaches the car, which catches fire. He puts out the fire and begins to examine the trunk finding the same type of shells from the previous incident. James takes off the bomb suit as it won't protect him from the amount of explosives in the car. He disarms the shells and searches the car for the trigger device, ignoring Sanborn's attempts to communicate. After several tense minutes, James finds the trigger and returns to the Humvee, where Sanborn hits him for not acknowledging him. A colonel on scene is impressed with James' handling of the situation in calmness, and expresses further admiration after James gives an exact count of the number of bombs he's disposed of. Sergeant James encounters an Iraqi boy who sells bootleg DVDs to the soldiers at the base perimeter. James demands his $5 back for a subpar movie he bought from the boy, who goes by the name Beckham. When Beckham tries to scam James, he is challenged to block a shot in a soccer goal area. Beckham succeeds and James agrees to buy another movie from him, warning him of consequences if it's defective. The team heads out to the desert to dispose of explo explosives they have collected and while they're setting up another bomb, James leaves briefly to retrieve gloves he left in the blast zone. During this time, Sanborn considers the possibility of exploding the bomb while James is away and calling it an accident, but Eldridge talks him out of it. On their way back to the city, 
They come across two parked SUVs with people standing near them. As they approach, the men drop their weapons in response to Sanborn's team. It turns out the men are British commandos who have a flat tire. James offers them equipment to fix it, and the Brit shows them two prisoners he has captured for a reward. However, the man fixing the tire is shot by a sniper causing everyone to seek cover. The British commando kills both prisoners as they try to escape, since the reward is the same for dead or alive. The bomb unit and the British soldiers are caught in a difficult situation and are forced to defend themselves. One of the Brits is killed while operating the machine gun in the Hummer. The British team leader tries to shoot at the enemy sniper from a rocky hill using a Barrett rifle, but he himself is shot and killed. Sanborn then takes up the rifle and James helps him aim. They run out of ammunition, but Eldridge finds a full magazine from the dead man. James helps Eldridge clean the bloodstained rounds and Sanborn continues to shoot the enemy troops. Eldridge then spots another potential sniper behind James and Sanborn and kills him. The situation situation brings James and his team closer together and they celebrate at James' housing unit. They discuss James' personality and background, and he shows them a box of parts from bombs he's disarmed as a reminder of the dangers of his job. The incident in the desert has shown James to be a team player. The next mission sees Colonel Cambridge Cambridge join the team as they inspect a building suspected of storing bomb-making materials. Cambridge remains outside while the team searches and they find evidence of the bomb-makers having recently left. Inside, James discovers the body of a young boy who he believes is Beckham, with a large incision in his chest revealing plastic explosives. He brings the boy outside, but Cambridge is killed by an exploding IED while trying to evacuate the locals. Eldridge is unable to come to terms with Cambridge's death and searches for him before finding his helmet in the blast area. Back at base, James approaches a DVD vendor at the perimeter and asks about Beckham, but the vendor's limited English prevents him from providing any information. James verifies the vendor's status with a nearby sergeant who confirms he is cleared. Later, James forces the vendor to drive him to Beckham's house after he packs up his merchandise. At the house, James questions a man in the kitchen at gunpoint, but the man is not able to provide any information. James realizes he has entered the wrong home and tries to leave but the man's wife starts shouting and throwing things at him. As he returns to base, James encounters angry locals and is eventually arrested at the main gate. When asked why he was off the base at night, James lies and says he was at a brothel, to which the duty sergeant asks where it is. The team is dispatched to investigate a bombing incident that occurred at night. Upon arrival, they find that a bomb went off near an oil tanker truck, causing a significant blast radius. James believes the bomber was not a suicide bomber but instead detonated the bomb from outside the perimeter. Enraged, James orders Sanborn and Eldridge to search the surrounding streets for the bomber. The three separate and shots are heard, leading James and Sanborn to reunite and find Eldridge being taken by two unknown men. James and Sanborn shoot the kidnappers and rescue Eldridge but James accidentally shoots Eldridge in the leg during the operation. This leads to James being severely distressed and nearly breaking down. The next day, James and Sanborn visit Eldridge before his helicopter evacuation. Beckham, who was thought to be dead, shows up and tries to talk to James, but he ignores him. At the helicopter, Eldridge is angry with James for shooting him and accuses him of seeking an adrenaline rush by taking them into a dangerous situation. Eldridge is then flown away for medical treatment. Sanborn and James respond to a bomb alert and find a man in the middle of a plaza. James orders the man to kneel and walks towards him. The man's coat reveals that he is wearing C4 explosives attached to steel bars, locked together with padlocks. The man pleads for his life and says he has a family. With only two minutes left on the timer, James tries to cut the locks, but there are too many. He must leave the man and the bomb detonates, killing the man. James is thrown by the blast, but only stunned. On their way back, Sanborn expresses fear of dying in Iraq and never starting a family. James tries to comfort him. When their rotation ends, James goes home but struggles to adjust to civilian life. This leads him to return to Iraq and the movie ends with him approaching another bomb site in his suit. In the early stages of the Iraq invasion, Sergeant William James takes over as team leader for an explosive ordnance disposal unit in Bravo Company, U.S. Army. He replaces Staff Sergeant Thompson, who died from a detonated IED in Baghdad. Along with Sergeants J.T. Sanborn and Specialist Owen Eldridge, they work to neutralize IEDs while communicating through radio and providing protection with rifles. James's unorthodox methods cause Sanborn and Eldridge to view him as reckless. At Camp Victory, James befriends a young Iraqi boy, Beckham, who sells pirated DVDs to soldiers. The team is then called to the United Nations building in Baghdad to handle a car bomb. As James carefully examines the bomb, Sanborn and Eldridge provide cover. Sanborn becomes wary of people observing them from nearby buildings and suggests calling in engineers to disarm the bomb, 
but James disregards his concern and successfully disarms the bomb himself, angering Sanborn. The EOD team gets into an enemy attack while returning from destroying bombs in the desert and three of the British mercenaries are killed in the battle. They then go on a mission to a warehouse to collect undetonated ordnance, where James finds a dead boy who has been surgically implanted with a bomb. James believes the boy to be Beckham and tracks down the man responsible for turning the boy into a body bomb. However, he ends up being kicked out of the house by the man's wife. That night, Eldridge is accidentally accidentally shot in the leg during a mission and the next morning, James is approached by Beckham, who is still alive. However, James ignores him, leading to Eldridge blaming James for putting his life in danger for an adrenaline fix. With just 48 hours left in their deployment, James and Sanborn are summoned to deal with a man who was forced to enter a military checkpoint with a ticking bomb strapped to his chest. James is unable to defuse the bomb before it goes off and must escape. On their way back to base, Sanborn becomes emotional and confesses to James that the pressure of being an EOD soldier is too much for him to handle and he's looking forward to starting a family outside of Iraq. James returns home to his wife and child, but becomes restless with civilian life. In a moment of self-reflection, he speaks out loud to his baby son and realizes that there is only one thing he truly loves. James then returns to Iraq for another year of service with Delta Company's EOD team. 